Hello, and welcome to Explore TBR, the channel dedicated to finding and exploring what remains of the historic Thailand to Burma Railway. In this video, we will explore the area around the bridge on the River Kwai and other sites around the town of Kanchanaburi. Kanchanaburi, at the 50 km point along the railway, was the location of a number of important wartime sites. The most well known of all was known during the war simply as Bridge 277, just one of hundreds of bridges along the railway. Years later, it will become more famously known as the Bridge on the River Kwai after the release of the Alec Guinness movie, loosely based on the wartime events here. Nearby is the site of the Tamakam POW camp, which came to be pronounced Tamarkan by the prisoners, and, a little further to the west, the Chunkai POW and hospital camp. The town of Kanchanaburi is around 100 kilometers to the west of Bangkok. The main railway line from Bangkok travels due west to Nong Pladuk Junction. This was the beginning of the Thailand to Burma Railway. The line branches off here and parallels the main line for a couple of kilometers before angling northwest towards Kanchanaburi. From Nong Pladuk onwards, the line follows the original so-called Death Railway route towards Burma. Let's stop for a minute in Nong Pladuk. This was a major station along the line with a shunting yard, engine sheds, many sidings and fuel and water facilities. However, none of the original wartime structures exist today. This photo shows the wartime Nong Pladuk Junction under attack by Allied bombers. At this point in the war, precision guided bombs hadn't been developed yet, and you can see that some of the bombs are landing inside the Nong Pladuk POW camp to the northwest of the railway station. This caused many casualties among the POWs, and it happened at many places along the railway because the camps were often located very close to strategic sites on the railway. It's a little known fact that the first precision guided bombs were developed for use on this railway. Called Azon or azimuth only bombs, these thousand pound bombs had a radio controlled fin assembly on the tail of the bomb so that they could be steered left or right during their fall, greatly improving accuracy. A magnesium flare in the tail was visible to the bomber crew as the bomb fell, allowing them to guide the bomb onto its target. But here in Nong Pladuk, this raid was using normal freefall bombs with their poor accuracy. This is what the same area looks like today. The post-war station sits in the same spot with much of the track, but nothing remains of the wartime railway structures. The POW camp was located in what is now this field. Around two kilometers farther along the line, we come to Banpong, the main transit camp for the thousands of POWs coming up from Singapore to the south. Here they got off the train, left most of their possessions behind and began the long march, sometimes hundreds of kilometers through the jungle to camps near the Burmese border. Another 50 kilometers onwards along the original death railway line, we come to the town of Kanchanaburi, another of the six major stations along the railway. The Kanchanaburi railway station is on the western outskirts of the town itself. Across the highway from the railway station, Mei Nam Kwai Road is where most travelers stay. The road is lined with guest houses, hotels, restaurants and bike rental shops. About two kilometers up the road to the north, we come to the famous bridge on the river Kwai. There's also a train station here. Let's have a look at what this area looked like during the war. This photo shows the area around the bridge during the war. As you can see, there were actually two bridges over the river during the war. A wooden temporary bridge was first built about 100 meters to the south or downstream from the current steel bridge. The steel bridge with its 11 curved spans was built to replace it, but the wooden bridge was kept in use as an alternative route during the war, as both bridges were frequently damaged by Allied bombing. You can see evidence of this from the many bomb craters near the bridge. These bridges were strategically very important and were the targets of many bombing raids. The wooden bridge was damaged and rebuilt many times, and the steel bridge was finally destroyed in early 1945. Three of the 11 steel spans were knocked out. Looking at the shadows of the bridge in this photo, you can clearly make out the 11 arched steel truss spans on the east end of the bridge and the 19 shorter wooden trestle type spans on the west side. You can also just see the Japanese anti-aircraft gun emplacements in the top right corner. In the bottom right corner, you can just see the corner of the Tamarkan POW camp fence. Across the road from the camp, the Japanese built a monument in memory of all the people who died building the railway. As we'll see in a minute, this memorial still stands today. 
This photo shows the steel truss spans on the eastern end of the bridge. Again, the Japanese fortifications north of the bridge are visible here. This photo shows the wooden trestle spans on the western end of the bridge, as well as the first view of the steel spans. This photo shows a train crossing the wooden bridge towards Kanchanaburi. The steel bridge is visible in the background. Late in the war, three of the central spans were knocked out in two separate bombing raids, putting the bridge out of action for the remainder of the war. The destroyed spans were rebuilt after the war using two angular spans which were each half again as long as the original sections. The photo on the right was taken more recently from approximately the same position as the wartime photo on the left, and you can still see where the shrapnel damage in the concrete pillars was patched. This is the memorial monument just across the road from the Tamarkan POW camp, near the wooden bridge. Here is another composite photo which shows a bigger picture around the bridge. You can see the railway line coming from Kanchanaburi Station around 5 kilometers to the southeast, then curving to the left as it approaches the bridges across the river. The track splits here with the approach to the wooden bridge on the left and the steel bridge on the right. The track to the wooden bridge passed right along the edge of the Tamarkan POW camp shown here. You can see the rows of long bamboo huts in the camp. The memorial is just visible across the road. To the north, on the other side of the steel bridge, you can see the Japanese anti-aircraft positions. Across the bridges on the other side of the river, the two tracks converge here. There's a third track, a siding which curved back around down to the river, where barges could transfer their cargo onto trains. Just past the point where the three tracks merged, we can see the beginning of the siding at Kaupon Station. Kaupon Station controlled railway traffic on the approach to the bridges from the west. This photo shows an even larger view of the same area, and shows more clearly the siding going all the way down to the riverbank to the south. As we switch to the view of the same area as it is today, keep your eye on the three-way switch on the west side of the bridge here, and the Tamarkan camp and monument here, and the anti-aircraft gun emplacements here. This is the satellite view of the same area today. Of course, the steel bridge still stands exactly where it always has. You can see that the wooden bridge doesn't exist anymore, but you can make out the trace of the railway line where it approached the wooden bridge along this tree line, you can find the ballast of the track bed along this stretch here. This photo was taken at this point, looking back towards Kaupon Station. The siding which ran down to the river is now a road leading back to Kanchanaburi. There is no trace of the Tamarkan POW camp today, which was located here, or the Japanese gun positions across the track here. The memorial still stands in the same place among the trees right here. This is what the memorial looks like today. I won't go back to Google Maps here. I just want to point out the locations of a few places that are worth exploring if you're in Kanchanaburi. All the locations are hyperlinked in the description below for you to easily find on Google Maps. You'll likely arrive in Kanchanaburi on the train at the railway station here. Photo 2 shows a large Garrett locomotive in the sidings at Kanchanaburi Station. In case you're wondering, it really was used by the Japanese during the war, but not along the Death Railway, where the curves and cuttings didn't have enough clearance for such a large locomotive. This locomotive was limited to mainline use in other parts of the country, and was moved to Kanchanaburi and put on display here after it was taken out of service in 1964. This photo was taken around 2001, when the sidings, ash pits, water towers, and other steam locomotive facilities were all located on the sidings east of the station. Most of the sidings have since been dismantled and removed, and the locomotive has been relocated to the park here, between the railway station and Highway 323. You'll probably stay along Mainam Kwai Road here, where most of the guest houses and hotels are located. The bridge on the River Kwai is a couple of kilometers northwest along Mainam Kwai Road. 
It's a pleasant walk, or you could rent a bicycle or motorbike from one of the shops along May Nam Kwai Road. You could also get a ride from one of the bicycle or motorbike taxis. At the bridge, there's a large market with food and drink stalls, as well as souvenirs. Photo 5 was taken from the east bank of the river, looking across. Turning right at the bridge, walking along the road away from the bridge, there are some World War II era Japanese steam locomotives on display. Photo 4 shows one of the locomotives here. Also on display here is an interesting machine that began life as a lorry, but was then converted to run on rails, pulling a string of wagons. Just south of the bridge, you'll find the monument in honor of the POWs who died building the railway. Photo 3 shows the memorial today. At the far end of the bridge, the track curves gently to the left. Follow it for another 720 meters to a road crossing. This is almost exactly the spot where the approach track to the wooden bridge split off from the main line, as well as the siding which looped around and went back towards the river. You can make out the trace where the three tracks converged here. Just south of this point was the site of the cow pond station with its short passing siding. The station and its siding track are no longer visible. Although the approach track to the wooden bridge has been plowed under to make way for farmland in some places, in others the embankment and track bed is still readily visible. Walk down the paved road, which was the former river siding, for around 500 meters and turn left onto a narrow track. You can see the embankment around 100 meters directly in front of you here. Photo 7, which we saw earlier, was taken here facing southwest. You can follow the trace of this line down to the river where photo 6 was taken and then turn left and make your way back to the bridge and across to the other side. On the south side of Sengchudo Road opposite the Kanchanaburi Railway Station lies the Kanchanaburi War Cemetery which contains the graves of 6,982 POWs, mostly English, Dutch and Australian and a few other nationalities who perished building the railway. In the months following the end of World War II, the Allied War Graves Commission traveled up and down the entire length of the line, exhuming all of the graves scattered along the line and in the camp cemeteries, and relocating the graves to the main cemetery here in Kanchanaburi, as well as a second cemetery in Shanghai, and a third at the far end of the line at Tanbuzayat in Burma. The size of these cemeteries is a sobering reminder of the staggering human cost of this railway. Across the small road on the northwest side of the cemetery is the Thailand Burma Railway Center, or TBRC for short, which you shouldn't miss. It contains excellent displays about the construction of the railway, a research library, and a shop with many interesting books on the history of the railway. Around 1.6 kilometers southeast on Chai Chumpol Road is the Jiath Museum. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but the name is an acronym for Japan, England, Australia, Thailand, and Holland, the five countries primarily involved in the railway's story. This museum focuses on the living and working conditions the POWs had to endure, and some of the displays are truly chilling. This museum is also well worth visiting. There's another museum just south of the River Kwai Bridge, which is incorrectly labeled on Google Maps as the Jiath Museum. It's not, and I found it less than impressive. I'll leave it to you to make your own judgment if you go in. The actual Jiath Museum here is highly recommended though. Rent a bike or motorbike and follow road 3228 west from central Kanchanaburi to get to the Chunkai Cemetery. It's a pleasant level ride, so bicycling is an easy way to get here. This cemetery is smaller, containing 1,541 graves, but otherwise it's very similar to the main Kanchanaburi Cemetery. Photo 8 was taken in Chunkai Cemetery. The eastern boundary of the cemetery also marks the eastern boundary fence of the former Chunkai POW camp, which was one of the largest POW hospital camps along the railway. The cemetery here is in the exact same location as the cemetery in the POW camp. This is an aerial reconnaissance photo of Chunkai camp during the war. You can see the rows of long bamboo huts, the nearby River Kwai, and the railway curving down from the bridge to the north. The cemetery was located here. Looking at the area today, the cemetery is located in the exact same spot, although there's no trace of the rest of the camp. At the level crossing, leave your bike and walk southwest along the tracks away from Kanchanaburi for another 550 meters and you'll arrive at Chunkai Cutting. 
All the way from Nong Pladak, it has been flat and level ground, and this was the first rock cutting on the line as it forged west towards Burma. There will be many more, of course. Chunkai Cutting is a huge cutting, shorter but just as deep as Hellfire Pass, and like so many of the cuttings, it was carved out of solid rock by manual labor. Photo 9 was taken on the far side of Chunkai Cutting, looking back towards Kanchanaburi. If you explore the cutting, look closely at the rock face and you'll see some remarkable crystal formations in the limestone cliff. If you're lucky, you'll see a train passing through the cutting. There's a train in each direction between approximately 5pm and 6pm, although they are notorious for being late. So that's it for Kanchanaburi. It's a very quiet, comfortable place to spend a few days or longer, especially after the sensory overload that Bangkok can be. All of the places I mention in this video are within bicycle distance of where you'll be staying, and the ground is flat and level. No hiking gear is required here, shorts and sandals will be fine, and food and drinks are available everywhere. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting or informative. If so, please give the video a like, and feel free to subscribe to this channel and check out the other videos on different sections of the railway. And if you do get out to Canterbury and explore these places, let me know how it went in the comments below. I'd really like to hear from you. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.